All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mortgage Coach 10X Tuesday interview. Uh, we're doing a little different format today because we got Dan Keller. Uh, last year, Dan, how, how many of the top 10 videos of the year in our YouTube channel were you in? I, I think you were in like three or four of them. Wasn't it like three or four? I think I saw something on LinkedIn. I think you texted me and um, I knew one of them that we did was going to be good. Um, but uh, I don't know, a couple of them, man. And uh, I just love love coming out here and sharing some some of the things that we're doing in our business. And hopefully it, it blesses this community as much as this community has blessed me. Yeah. So so by the way, guys, I try to be as intentional as possible on LinkedIn, bringing value. You know, right now, every Monday morning, I'm doing a message to branch managers. But here were the top 12 interviews of last year in our YouTube channel. And let's just see how many were Dan Keller. Uh, so he did not get the number one spot. We gave that to Phil Jones. Um, but look who came in second. We got a little Dan Keller action. Unlock the power of cold calling. Oh, number three. You know, uh, or wait, yeah, that's number three. Uh, there's Dan Keller again, the realtor playbook. Great headline. Um, I know there's another Dan Keller. You were part of Scriptapalooza. So you made that. And uh, there we go. So it looks like four. Four of the top 10 interviews of last year in the YouTube channel. And let's make this one one of the top 10, top 12. Uh, so I think everybody in this community knows you, Dan. Uh, this is the second time Chad has been in this community. But why don't, why don't you do a little introduction for Chad, just because not everybody knows him yet. And then we'll we'll tee up the topic at hand. Yeah, so this is, this is round two with uh, my most recent coach or trainer. I, I I try to, Chad Cooley to me is like, you know, and you guys see behind me, I'm a big baseball guy. I came from college and, and semi-pro coaching um, baseball before I got into mortgage 16 years ago. I look at Chad Cooley as a professional baseball player, as a strength and conditioning coach, um, or maybe as a nutritionist or someone that can go in and take a really great athlete who's already at the, at the major league level, but make them an all-star. And, and I found Cooley about a year and a half ago intentionally. Like I, I literally, you can go back to my Instagram. I put it out to the universe that I was on a hunt to learn how to be better at sales. It's Dave, it's just, it's something that's just not taught in our industry. I think we're, we're all sales people, um, but they don't acknowledge that mortgage and real estate is sales, 100% sales and prospecting. I, I was just on a call with you and Carl White. And Carl's like, oh, you heard you that. Know, you you better to that? do right now than to pro you should be prospecting, like prospect. But they don't teach us how to prospect. They they say go prospect, or a branch manager says, hey, go do this. But it's not, I mean, Cooley was on a call the other day and he was like, Dan, I no offense to the mortgage coach community, but is that what they're teaching loan officers? And I was like, dude, this is what they're teaching us. There's really no education around prospecting, selling, and closing. And so I met Cooley and uh, I met him through a real estate community because he's the head coach, head sales coach for a huge real estate company. I'll let him talk about that here in a minute um, nationwide. And I was a guest one morning where he was teaching people, his agents, um, veterans, rookies, it didn't matter how to call for, for sell by owners and for uh, expired listings. And I was just like, holy crud, like this, this is sales training. This is ninja. This is next level. And then the testimonials started rolling in a couple of agents in my marketplace that are in his breakfast club calling expires and for sale by owners and making her first hundred thousand dollars in one month, you know, Amanda Weller, right? Cooley. And yeah. she's a year and a half full-time single mom, stay at home mom, year and a half in the industry, just banging listing appointment. Mm -hmm. And so I was hooked. I went in, I was able to get uh, a call with Chad and I said, Hey, are you interested in coaching a mortgage broker? And he was like, not really. He was like, what, what do you need? He goes, I can help you. And we just kind of started talking and we found, I think we found a gap in the mortgage space that there's, we chase realtors, we call realtors, we deal with borrowers that have rate objections and, uh, you know, Hey, I've already, thanks Dan, but I've already been pre-approved with a bank or a credit union. And how do you respond we react. How do you respond to that? And what do you say? And then how do you close them for an appointment for business? And so 
Um, Chad's made a huge impact, taking me as a pretty good loan officer. Um, you know, I'll just share this real quick testimony. In the last three months, I've landed two accounts that huge accounts. Um, one involved uh, recruiting a loan officer, and the other was an in-house lending job for my branch. And I don't think that I was equipped with the right info because I'd been chasing them for about a year. Um, and with what I've learned from Chad, really helped me put, you know, really, really seal that deal, nail down that deal. So um, I can't wait to continue to share Cooley with you guys. This is round two with Cooley. So I don't have a coaching program. I'm not here to pitch any coaching program. Cooley and I have actually set up a training program. We'll talk about that at the very end, but we did round one. We did a 90 day burn. We did it October to January. The results with the loan officers that joined that, we're going to have one come on today, Cody uh, Villanueva, to share just kind of what he learned and how many appointments. The goal was to set, the goal was to meet. We had a 30 agent tracker at the end of the 90 days, because of what you learned and the accountability, you would have met, sat down and met with 30 new real estate agents. That was the goal. That was the program. And then Cooley kind of coached us on how to do it, what to say. I coached on the first realtor meeting, the follow-up, all that good stuff. So um, this is round two with Cooley. And then I'm going to take some of this stuff and be on the stage at the Modern Mortgage Summit. Gosh, what is that? In two weeks, Dave? Yeah, no, it's coming up, guys. Just a reminder, the Modern Mortgage Summit, first half of the day is a bunch of badass loan officers delivering uh, a 15 minute keynote from stage. And then the second half of the day is a bunch of badass modern real estate professionals uh, delivering something amazing. And it's, it's super simple. I mean, it's, it's a hundred dollars to sign up, get the virtual ticket. Uh, you know, these are some of the, the mortgage professionals that are going to be on the stage. We'll put a link down below. Uh, second half of the day, we've got a few more realtors to add to this list um, there's still room. I think there's still 20 seats available. It's in Bradley's studio. So it caps at 60 people. There's like 60, you know, large recliner leather back chairs all surrounding this badass suite. So if you want to be there in person, it's a thousand dollars and we have 20 seats ish left. So check that out. So here's, here's what comes to my head, you know, and, and, and Cooley, if you don't mind one, I'm going to start calling you Cooley because your coach All Cooley right. to me. Uh, you call me Savage, you know. All right. Um, That's a better um, name, Savage. I wish I had yeah. that name. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad I have that name. I've grown into it. Uh, yeah. uh, and then I'm also going to start calling you a sales conditioning coach because because when I think of that first interview that we did together, you know, that's what you're doing. I mean, you're teaching skills. But more importantly than that, you're helping people practice their skills. Yeah. You know, you're you're doing role playing at scale, which is something to your point, Dan, is badly missing from the industry. It's not gone though. You know, like when I interviewed Daniel Saw and see what he's done with his region, you know, where last year they became the number one market leader in Columbus, Ohio, like they're training, you know, they're there are they are training. So there is that, but but here's the deal, guys. Even the top one percent aren't training enough. And so to, and to your point, Dan, 99% of the mortgage and real estate industry isn't even doing the training. You know, they're not doing the role playing and they're not doing what we did before. So, so coach Cooley, welcome to the community. This is the second time. Uh, hopefully I'm, I'm going to interview you solo next time. If you're cool with that, nothing yeah. against Dan Keller, but I, I would love to just interview you for this community and really get inside your head and really pull out some best practices. So Dan, are you cool sure. if if I do a solo interview of Coach Cooley? Yeah, yeah, you know, I, yeah, absolutely. I don't know him. He's just. A, I wanted to introduce him to a to this this amazing community, and I just think that there's a there's an opportunity, and he's so gifted, and and he's so humble, and he's a giver, and so yeah, I knew it'd be a perfect. Uh, I knew it'd be a perfect fit. All right, guys. So let's since we're we got this coach theme going. This is a football game, and there's four quarters in the game, and we're almost done with Q1. Uh, and, and I don't know that you got, well, you did get a takeaway. You got a takeaway that, that conditioning matters, role-playing matters, and there's a gap in the space. So we got three more quarters to play. Uh, Dan, I know you had a vision for this because I invited you to the party and it could have just been me and you, but you're like, Dave, trust me, I've got something I want to bring to the mortgage space. It's not just me, uh, you know, and I trusted you. So I'm going to, 
I'm going to stay on the call, but I'm going to yeah. let you run the next three quarters. You're the quarterback now. And yeah. uh, let's, let's run, let's, let's close out this game the way you yeah. envisioned. Yeah. Let's frame this real quick and then we'll bring Chad on. So think of it this way, loan officers, there's two things that I want you to consider as, as Chad gets ready to speak. The, the first thing I said this from stage last year at the modern mortgage summit, take a moment and think of your, your favorite actor or actress, the movie that they starred in the role that they played, maybe many roles. And what made them unique wasn't the fact that they learned their lines really good. They became the character. Like they went above and beyond just learning the lines. Like we can get, we can get told a line to learn a script to learn, but what Cooley is teaching us is how to become that actor or that actress on the phone in front of a client. That's the first thing. The second thing is I've been coached for, by the way, the, the coach that you just had on before us, Carl White, my first coach back in 2008. Love the guy. Got me going into video. But I was your first coach? coach. Wait a minute. Carl White was yeah. your first coach? I did yeah. not know. Carl White and Scotty Hudspeth. Yeah, the marketing animals way back in the day. Oh, yeah. 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 By the way, did yeah. you yeah. listen I, to hey, that even, interview we just did? I was, I was listening to it in the truck on the way in. Yep. Yep. Love I love that, that guy. Yeah. He's awesome, man. He's he's such a giver. Yeah. And if you think of it this way, I've had coaches from, from 2008 to current. And most recently, my last coach over the last seven years, just he just says it's a numbers game. Just pound the phone, more numbers, call 200 realtors. And since I've met Cooley, no disrespect to my coach, but he's wrong. It's not a numbers game. It's a skills game. Chad completely changed my perspective on selling, on making calls, prospecting. And that's really how I wanted to tee up Chad Cooley today, that this is, he's a skills trainer. He's a performance coach. I love what you just said, Dave, a uh, sales conditioning coach, because that's exactly what he does. So with no further ado. Whoa, Cooley, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got to insert something because because yeah. it is a numbers game and a skills game. Yeah. And the most successful people always work on their skills and they do track their numbers. So yep. just want to put that little caveat yep. in. With no further ado, Coach yep. Cooley. Yeah, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to live up to that hype, to be honest with you, but I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's. I respect the spirit of it's a numbers game, right? Because when you don't have the skill set, you have to play the numbers. You've got to be a real estate casino or a mortgage casino, and you have to play the numbers. But there are certain things that are going to make your life a lot easier. And when you think about the one thing that we're all trying to buy with with our money is our time, right? How great would it be instead of making 50 calls, you could get the same result making 10? You know what I mean? And so I know that everybody hates cold calls, and I really hate that term because cold calls to me are something that are necessary but don't need to be made if you have the right value proposition and you make your calls warm. There's a way to do it, and it starts kind of with your value proposition. And, you know, I was talking to Dan about this before we um, – before we uh, – before we met and hold on one second, guys. Sorry about that. Um, the heck? Sorry. Give me one second, guys. I'm trying to hey, well, technology well, problem. Well, while he's doing that, the other thing I want to make a point on the numbers Shit. is at the end of the day, your the way you judge yourself are your results. And if you're tracking how many calls you made, how many total cost analysis you delivered, how many apps you got. You, you can see as you improve your skills, like the most skilled producers have the highest conversion and not just borrower conversion, realtor conversion. So yeah. anyways, it looks like you got it figured out, Chad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. had to turn off my message. I'm getting a thousand phone calls and I forgot to turn it off before I jumped on here. Sorry about that. Um, there's a way to make your your sales calls warm. And when I first talked to Dan, like I thought, I thought a lot of this was common knowledge. You know what I mean? That that we've got to have a strong value proposition in order to make our sales calls warm. And then, like I had Dan Keller give me kind of his pitch um, on what he does to set appointments with real estate agents, and it kind of blew me away because I come at it from the perspective of like, if I'm a producing agent, uh, do I have time to actually listen to what Dan's saying? Dan, do you mind kind of just yeah. going over what that what what that phone call sounded like? Yeah, this is what I've said for the last six years. I've even come in the mortgage coach community, and I've heard a lot of other mortgage coaches get interviewed in here, and. And their script is, you know, the, the realtor picks up and, and you're like, hey, 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 Chad, this is Dan Keller over at over at New American Funding. Um, hey, man, I 
you're a big player in town. I'm a big player in town. I can't believe I've been in the industry for five years and we've never met. I've seen your signs everywhere, blah, 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 something along those lines. And you were just like, hey, you know, that's fine because it's going to lead to an objection. But what, yeah. tell them what you told me. <laughs> it was like, it was I, so I said, I don't need your cup of coffee. Like, why are you calling me with it? I don't care if you're a big player. Like, I'm busy, I'm doing stuff. What do you have to sell me other than coffee? Like, I, you know, with, with all due respect, and I respect the hustle, anybody who's out there making the phone calls and, and doing the job. But at the end of the day, it's like, you guys all have vendors calling you too. And can you imagine if an insurance guy called you today and asked you, hey, Dan, I'm a big insurance guy. You're a big mortgage guy. Can we get together for a cup of coffee? Pardon me, but I can buy my own cup of coffee. Like, I don't need you to, to, to buy me a cup of coffee. I can do that on my own. What else you got? You know what I mean? And Dan's got tremendous value, but what I found is he just wasn't articulating it right. He wasn't getting to the point. You know what I mean? And so although he had strong value, it was kind of muddy because he wasn't he wasn't talking to me about that. He was talking to me about something that he wanted, which is some of my time and a cup of coffee with me, if that makes sense. And so, Dan, like, how did you react when I when I kind of pushed back like that? Were you accepting of that? Were you like, how did you feel about that? Well, I, the first thing was I came to you for help as a coach. Like I was yeah. humble. I was on my knees saying, help me like this. I've been doing this for 15 years. I know there's a better way. I need an advantage in my market and in my industry. And my first reaction was, okay, I get it. That's selfish. It's I, 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 I'm a big player in town. I want to yeah. meet with you. I, and you flipped that. You were like, nobody cares. It's You're making it all about you. Make it about them. What do realtors want? Well, realtors like referrals. Realtors want more business. Um, realtors want to work less, make more. They want to save time. And so you and I, you didn't have the answer necessarily right away. It was a combination of yeah. you and I meeting together. Um, you run a huge uh, 700 plus real estate agent group. So you're constantly recruiting. So you call realtors, you get it. And yeah. so what we kind of did is you blended it in going, hey, let's try this. But this is what I loved about Chad. Chad's like, Dan, give me three days. I'll get back to you and tell them what you did. Um, I, I, I made phone calls. I made he phone called, calls to realtors as a loan officer. Yeah. He called like made up a name, a mortgage company, ABC mortgage company, but you, how many did you call? Yeah. 20? 20. And set 13 appointments or no, 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 it was, it, I made 20 phone calls. I had 17 contacts and set 16 appointments, something like that. It was, it was dramatically lopsided to the point where the majority of people that I talked to, I got an appointment with, which is kind of like not heard of, you know, but the advantage that I have is that I work with real estate agents every day. I know what kind of, I know what captures their attention. I know what they're looking for. So for me on the inside, it was a lot easier to come up with a script that goes, okay, like I want to listen to Dan. I want to hear what Dan has to say. And so, um, and it was all about like, how can I, what is my value? How can I make that value upfront in the phone call known um, to the point where they want to hear what I'm saying next to the point where the only option that they have to ask me is not no, but it's just like how, you know what I mean? If you can get people saying how, how can you do that? How can you help me like that? Well, then how is it? Yes. And you won, if that makes sense. That's what I'm searching for. I tell people this. I search for the, well, how do you do that? What do you mean? And when I can get that, that's a yes. Yeah. Because that means they're genuinely curious. And when they're curious, and that's exactly why I'm calling today. So let's do this. And so Chad's walked us through. There's different phases. Chad's called it the pathway to yes. I absolutely love that. And I've, I've watched, you know, we had about 25 loan officers in our group during the 90 day burn. And we have actually Cody as a, as a guest to come on today as, as an example, just to kind of share maybe a testimony, maybe role play with Cooley here in a second. Completely raw, not he, calling realtors before, comes into the group, learns this process and this pathway, perfects it in, a, in less than a 90 day period and got extreme results. Um, and that's what I got from it, too, is just understanding that a no or uh, well, I don't understand what you're, what are you trying to sell leads? Nope. I happen to be one of the top loan officers and, oh, you're a, you're a loan officer. No, I'm already good. Most loan officers would rebut to that. They, they, they reply to that. They'd react to that as an objection. And Cooley's taught us exactly what to say in those circumstances. 
that objection is what we want. That, well, I don't know what you mean or show me how is exactly what we want. It's if, and, and so like everybody can do this as long as your value proposition is strong enough. And so for all the loan officers out there, I would ask, you know, what are you doing right now to provide value to your agents? What is that? Write that down. And then I want you to ask yourself, if somebody called you like an insurance guy and or a title company and called you with that value proposition, would that make you stop doing the deals that you are working on right now? Would that make you kind of halt progress on your day to listen to that person? Or would you brush them off or say something like, call me back, right? And we can't look at call me back as a win, right? Or if somebody's responding to your value as, like, good to know. Oh, Dan, that's great. That's good to know. You've got that. Good to know. I'll keep you in mind, right? That's a complete rejection of your value. And so we've got to learn to have a better value proposition. Dan, um, you've got a value proposition that you've got that is really strong. What's that value proposition? And why, I guess, why were you leading with a cup of coffee instead of the end result of the value that you're providing? Yeah. Well, one, I never knew. So it was always just go set appointments with realtors. Like I thought it was a win on my tracker that I had to turn into my coach if I got the face to face with the realtor. Yeah. Again, I'm no, no, no disrespect. And I agree with Dave. Yes, it is a numbers game and a skills game. When I say it's a numbers game, the coach is out there going, just call more people. That's what I mean. It's not just a numbers game. Like just calling more people is not going to solve the problem. It's going to create more work. It's going to create more yeah. follow-up. It's going to create more chaos. What if you could call less people and have better results? And so that's where it being a skills game. Yes, or, numbers or what right. if you had an undeniable value proposition that every time you talk to somebody, they were like, yes, I want to meet with you. And if you don't mind, Dan, I'd love to have kind of yeah. that phone call real quick. Do we have Cody on here? We got Cody on here too. Yeah, let's let's do this to let's do this to create a little bit of. Uh, yeah, here's here's what I here's what I'd like to do. I'm going to turn off my camera right now because we're going to do a role yeah. play. And how how many of you guys would love to hear a role play um, with Cody, who's actually <laughs> Cody? You're newer to the business, right? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, yeah, I've been a, a full time licensed LO since about June of 2020. Okay, I love it. And I'm going to have Cody do a role play. He went through our 90 day burn program that we had and man, he sounds great. He sounds better than I do at this point, which is fantastic. But I want you to, to listen to what Cody is saying. And before your guys' eyes roll and go in like, wait a minute, but how? Cause there's going to be a lot of skepticism when you hear Cody talking and Cody. So I want to ask you a question before we get started. Number one, do you believe in the value that you're selling when you call? I do now. <laughs> do you have do you have a way to back up everything that you're saying? And is anything that you're saying any way, shape or form misleading or setting the wrong expectation? Absolutely not. OK, now I want all of you guys who are on this call right now to just tell me real quick or I'm sorry, tell me afterwards if you could make a phone call like this to all of the agents in your marketplace, how would it change your business? How would it change your production? How would it change the relationships that you have? And wouldn't it be the most badass sales call you've ever made? Okay. So real quick, Cody, I want you to ring me up and I'm a real estate agent. Give me a call, please. Sounds good. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Chad, this is Cody Villanueva. You're the realtor at the Keller Williams in Pomona, right? Uh, I am. Who's this? My name is Cody. Chad, I was giving you a call. Are you in a position to take on more business right now? Uh, yeah, I am. Of course, I'm in a position to take on more business, but are you, what are you calling for exactly? Chad, I'm a local lender in the area and I have a unique ability to generate business in our marketplace. And I'm just looking for an agent well, that can hey, actually hey, get Cody, out there. Let me just, let me just stop you right there. Uh, real quick. I've got a lender that I work with. His name is Dave, Dave Savage. He's a killer in the industry. And so I'm really not looking for any new lender relationships right now. I think I'm all set with a lender if that's what you're calling about. Chad, I'm not surprised, man. Most good agents have a really good lender. And right now, I'm not looking to take anything away from your current relationship. What I'm looking to do is I have a business that I'm generating, and I'm just looking for a great agent that can actually get out there and convert it. If I were to send you a listing right now, would you be able to convert that, Chad? Uh, well, yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, I'm a good agent. If you give me any type of lead or anything like that, yes, I can go out there and convert it. But I guess I don't understand, like, are you looking to send me business? Are you selling leads? Um, what I guess I'm failing to understand exactly what you're calling about. Exactly. 
Yeah, Chad. So I'm not selling anything. Like I said, I'm just, I have a business that I'm generating and I'm looking for agents that can get out there and convert it. My only expectation here, Chad, is let's say I send you a listing and it turns into a buyer and they need help with financing. Would you have any problem sending them to me for the loan since I sent them to you originally? Uh, no, if you refer me a deal and they turn into a buyer, of course I'd reciprocate that. Awesome. Well, it sounds like we have a mutual understanding on doing some business together. Um, let's do this. We'll get together. I'll go over exactly what I'm talking about. We'll see if we're a good fit for each other and we'll make some decisions from there. I've got time tomorrow. Does 11 a.m. or 12 p.m. work better for you? So real quick, the one thing that I can't let slide and, and like I critique and that's what I do, you know, is Cody, never tell them that there's an expectation. You don't need an expectation. You just need to create the scenario, right? So I guess I right. don't get what's happening here. Cody, I have the unique ability in a market like this to generate business. And if I actually referred you some business, they turned into a buyer, you would have no problem sending that business right back to me. Correct? Great. And that's it. Right. And then, Perfect. and then you move on to the close. But if, when you start talking about expectations and stuff like that, it doesn't really matter. Now, crazy call everybody who's on this call or listening, right? Because what is Cody doing? Is Cody like begging for business at all? Does, can you guys give me a thumbs up in the chat group if Cody's beg if you felt like any part of Cody was begging for business? No, no, not at all, right? And so the question becomes for everybody who's probably listening is, well, what is that exactly? Okay, and how is Cody going to go out there and deliver? And so my philosophy is is really simple, guys. Is you've got to lead with value. You know what I mean? And you've got to sell instead of talking about relationships and working to, with people. And I guess what I would call things that are normal, like if you think about the value you have, typically it's like a service with your clients, right? Or it's turnaround time, or it's something that's basic that everybody has that nobody cares about, but you, you know what I mean? And so you've got to come up with your own undeniable value proposition. And even if it, even if something that you use now and it's a small, gets you a small rate of return or even a big rate of return, that's what you're selling to agents is the end result, right? And that's what you're leading, the benefit of the end result. So Cody's uh, value proposition is really strong. He knows how to generate business and he's going to offer that to him. Hey, are you in a position to take on new clients right now? Are you in a position to take on new business right now? I want you guys to think of why he's asking that question right out of the gate, okay? Because Cody's not talking about how great he is. Cody's leading with something that he knows that's important to the agent right out of the gate, with something that's actually going to take their attention. If 2023 taught us anything, it's that loan officers and agents alike are struggling with business right now, right? And the value of actually calling with some support for that is just undeniable, at least enough to get you to listen. And you're going to get your average objections. You're going to get, I already have a lender. Great. Don't care about that. Cody, do you care if they have a lender or not? No, I'm not interested in their lender relationship. I'm, uh, I'm sending them some business and that's all I care about. On the phone, right? And the opportunity right. and the phone calls, what you're doing is you're creating opportunity. You know what I mean? You're not you're not making a sales phone call. You're not going to develop a 10 year relationship in a two minute phone call. It's just not possible. Right. So Cody's objective is to create an opportunity for himself. Now, the one thing that Cody knows and what gives him a lot of power is that he knows that he's going into the meeting with something tangible that these people are going to be like, yes, I want to work with you right? Because the goal isn't to just get a referral partner, Cody. And if the goal isn't to get a referral partner, what's the goal? We're creating opportunities. We're getting these meetings. We're getting in front of realtors. We're bringing value to them. Um, there's, I see a lot of people in the chat too the, that are skeptical about this. And yeah. I remember feeling the same way before. Yeah. Um, I haven't shared this with Cooley or Dan yet, but by the end of April, I'll be at about 47% of the production I did last year, just in these first four months. Uh, and I think this has a lot to do with it. So, yeah. so yeah, the skepticism is something that, that I addressed before we made this call, right? Because how great would it be for you if honestly you knew how to make this phone call, you could execute this phone call, and you could follow through, right? Yeah. Um, I was talking to a lender, Dan, with you yesterday on your Rise MLO, and I asked him the question, like, what value are you bringing to real estate agents? And he said, well, you know, I've got a home uh, price an, um, uh, analyzer, 
right? Mm -hmm. That I that I give to all of my agents. And I'm like, great, what's that? Explain it to me. Explain to me how that's valuable to me. And he goes, well, it helps you predict the price and make sure that you're not overpriced. And I'm like, hey, man, I stopped listening to you already. You know, I don't even know what you're saying. I don't even know what you mean. Is that value for your cl their, their clients or is it value for them, right? And he said, I see where you're going. And I go, but what else do you have like, what else do you have in your system right now that generates you business? Do you have any email drip campaigns or anything that you leverage right now to generate yourself some business? And he's like, well, yeah, I do X, Y, and Z, and it nets me, you know, three to five deals a year. And I'm like, is that something that you can share with your agent? Is that something that you can teach your agent how to do, right? Yeah. Well, then how can you set up your value proposition and sell it? And sell the result rather than selling like the process, because if you're selling an email drip campaign, nobody gives a shit, right? If you're set, if you're selling, hey, hey, Dan, if I could put you, are you in a position right now where you could close an extra three to five transactions if you were to get them? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, now you've got my attention and now we're talking about something tangible because I'm leading with what's in it for you rather than my process and what I'm concerned about, if that makes yeah. sense. And so- yeah, go ahead. You want to say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ke Savage, Savage and Cooley, I'm I'm following along and reading the reading the comments. Great comments, you guys. Keep them coming. But I want there's a lot of them that keep showing up, and we're gonna address these. Um, the first is I want to take I want to take 30 seconds, all of you guys, and I want you to put down in the chat what is your unique value. If you're calling a realtor right now, what is like Cooley said? What is your unique value proposition? What can you offer a value? If that insurance agent were to call you or I, what would it take for them to get an appointment with us? What would it take of value from you to get an appointment for, with a realtor? Put that in the chat, number one. Um, Cooley, I want to address this real quick. Luke Luke just commented on, on Cody's role play, which Cody, it, dude, you're four months into this. Incredible job, okay? But Luke made a comment, said, not begging, but definitely salesy. Awesome. Guess what? Cody's getting better. And, and phase two of this role play, phase two. Yeah, of can I just address that real code. quick? Like yeah. when, when people say things like that's salesy, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, well, what's your other option is, and is that working for you? Is the other option like parting your hair and trying to be a good old boy and just asking people like, please, will you, uh, will you meet with me for a cup of coffee? Like I'm a good person. Uh, like, no, I mean, this if you want the ability to be able to generate relationships when you want relationships and you have to be a person of value and you have to be able to articulate that value. And, and if, if you don't, if you don't feel empowered enough with the product that you have to go out there and just pitch it and, and, and offer it to people, then your product sucks. You know what I mean? Um, especially in this day and age, go ahead, Dave. Yeah. I want to call something out because Cody, this is, I think the, I feel like I've met you, but it's definitely the first time you've we've been on Zoom together. Um, you're you're a mortgage coach, right? I am. Yeah, we met at. Uh, I work with Gem Mortgage. You were at our sales yeah. conference this last thought. couple months I ago. I remember yeah. that. And you're like that young gun. And He's how stunned. many how many total cost analysis have you created? Oh man, I was looking at this with my branch manager the other day. Uh, I'm not at the the top top grandmaster yet. I'm still a black belt, but I'm I'm close. So so guys, he's a he's a black belt. He actually, I looked in the back end. He's done over 500 total cost analysis. <laughs> oh he's done 30 of these in the last 30 days. The guy is not a loan officer. He 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 is an advisor. Um, he has a different level of confidence from the inside out. And, and you know what, he, he, he's, a, he's got two skills, you know, he, I'm looking forward to learning more about the skill of bringing you uh, an opportunity, but he also has a skill of conversion, you know, like, like he can sit in front of a realtor with complete confidence that, that I am going to help you make more money. I could, I could help you convert your buyers at a higher level. And he's super skilled at that. I, and I've got strategies to actually help bring you more business. Yeah. So like, he's not faking it. Like he knows this. And so I just want to make the point for anyone listening to this. Uh, you know, if you're just faking it and you're just like, you know, writing down the scripts and you, you can't actually bring the go the goods, um, yeah. it's not going to work the same, you know? So I just want to make sure people, you gotta, you gotta work to become a Dan Keller. You gotta work to become a coyote, a Cody, and and that means you need to deliver advice versus price. If all you're doing is doing prequels, 
for, for buyers. You're just not going to be able to show up the same way. Also, yeah. since we're a little bit into Q3, I just want to get a little reaction, you know, give a little reaction. How did you feel about the first half, guys? How's this call rocking out for you? Uh, whatever reaction comes to mind, let's let's let um, Chad, Cody, and Dan know. There we go. We got the love. You guys are on fire. So I'll pass it back yeah. to you guys. Yeah, real quick, Cooley, real quick. It, just to piggyback what Dave just said, like, and and Luke, um, I want I want to spend a moment on that comment because Chad, or excuse me, Cody is that young Tom Cruise. Cody's that young actor that you give him another three, four, six months, he's going to come into that role even better. What Co what Cooley's coaching me on right now is when I'm on the phone with a realtor, I sound like I'm having a conversation like you right now. Like I'm, I'm a little bit more calm. He's working on my tonality. That's kind of like phase two of the 90 day burn phase two of Cooley is working on some of the, the, the things that make you from, take you from good to great um, and help you even get better. And so I respect that Luke. The other part of that is kind of sells, kind of sounds salesy. Hey, until you get in the trenches and you roll up your sleeves and you're calling 50 to a hundred uh, real estate agents as cold sales calls, you got to understand, and, and I learned this from Cooley, you're hunting. You're hunting for new business. Think about it. If you're out in the wild and you had to hunt to survive, you're not just going to throw little darts at the animals. You're, you're going to hunt, man. You're going to attack. And so, yeah, it may come across a little bit salesy, but at the end of the day, like Dave said, Cooley, uh, Cooley the value proposition with Chad and with Cody and, and myself is 100%. There's zero. Yeah. I can We can back it 100%. Well, when people so, say salesy, it's like, I feel like you have to qualify what you mean by that, right? Like yeah. we're all in a sales business. And if you feel like you're not in a sales business, you're probably in the wrong business, you know? Um, but when when you've got an undeniable product and you know that people need it, you want to give it to them, right? And so what Cody was doing there, it's like, he doesn't care about my lender, right? Do you want to get into an argument? You have two options, right? If somebody says, I already have a lender, you can say, Oh, okay, well, thank you for your time. That's not sales at all, but that's not going to get you the result. Or you can say, oh, great. Yeah, Dan Keller's a great lender. I, you know, I, there's enough business for all of us. It's like, okay, what well, you're calling me, you're inconveniencing me. What do you have for me? I guess is the question. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's ask, let's answer a couple of other questions in there, which is which is really big. I don't get it. How are you giving them a listing? I don't get it. How's that first realtor meeting? Like when you sit down with them. So the good news, you guys, Dave's interviewed me before on that. So we can go back and maybe post it in the comments or I'll come back after this call and post it in the comments, like my first meeting with the realtor. If you want to go to my private group that I have for loan officers, it's Rise MLO uh, Training with Dan Keller, Sales Training with Dan Keller. If you go there, you can download all my documents. I did a video on the first realtor meeting um, where we tee up the ability to refer them buyers and listings, Okay. Uh, we don't want to spend a ton of time on that there. Uh, there, The other part of this is Chad and his partner, Chad coaches every single morning, his group of 700 plus real estate agents, whoever wants to join 729. It's called the breakfast club for, uh, for real estate agents, 729 culture, where he coaches, he does this 30 minute role play on how to call expireds and for sell by owners. I plug my real estate agents into that. So when I make that offering that I can help generate listings, help you generate listings, I'm going to enter. I'm not going to call expireds for them. I'm going to teach them how to go out and have a ridiculous, a ridiculously valuable sell skill, which is actually calling for sell by owners and expireds. And if you understood the statistics on for sell by owners, the percentage of for sell by owners that actually use real estate agents, it's like almost nine out of 10 eventually list with a realtor. Those numbers are huge. So that's one of the, that's one part of the process. We refer our agents into that group to get some coaching and some training. And then the next part is we'll talk about it later. I'll put it in the link below. But that first realtor meeting is we identify ways where we, through their database, through some of the marketing uh, objectives that we have in our business, where we generate business with them and for them. So Cody has, Cody has the, the confidence to actually go out there during the meeting and offer, offering them a buffet of ways that he can help them generate business. You know what I mean? And that's really where the power is, is like when Dan and I partnered and when I came up with this script, 
I, I know how realtors go out there and generate business. You know what I mean? I know what they're good at. I know what they use. I know what they don't use. I know what's neglected in their business, right? And so if I'm a loan officer, and believe it or not, when I was, you know, when I was actually in the mortgage business, I used to use this exact same method, albeit not with the technology that we have right now, but with the same concept, you know, which is how can I how can I leverage what I know to use to generate business to generate that for you? And just like a cell phone, incorporate myself into your business and in your life. Right. So with when you're talking about cell phones, like nobody cares. No, no cell phone company sells the flat fact that they make like the clearest phone calls anymore because nobody cares about that. It's standard. It's what it does. You know what I mean? It's it's an expectation. Like what why you use your phone so much and why you need it is because the technology companies are really smart and they've made it so that. They've incorporated their phone in, in into your life and into your business, and now you can't survive without your phone, right? How many of you guys would feel comfortable doing business without your phone? And so the goal of this conversation and this value add is to incorporate yourself into their business so that they rely on you for business and that you're a working part of their engine in their business rather than just being a referral partner. Because you can go for referral partners and people might send you deals here and there, and that's great. Or you can incorporate yourself into people's business so much so that their business can't really run without you. And that's kind of like the value proposition Cody and I put together, right, Cody, as to how like we can dig into their business and become a part of it. And even with unproductive agents, like wouldn't it be great if you can get these agents to go out there and actually produce? How great would that be? And that business is coming right back to you. A lot of these guys and in the industry, guys, there's no leadership in the real estate industry. Um, and if you can step up and and help these people work and help these people generate business, that business is going to come back to you. That loyalty is there. And you'll never run out of ways where you can help people generate business. It's just do you do you know do you have the tools and resources to do it? Do you know how to actually go out there and yes, sell it? Right. Do you know actually how to how to lead with the end result instead of the means to get there. Most people will say no to you because you're leading with the means to get you. Hey, I've got this, this, and this that might be able to help you. Don't care about that. Hey, I can get you an extra three deals a year. Are you open to that? Yes. You know, and that's where your your cold calls stop becoming cold and start becoming warm when you're talking about what's important to other people. Hey, hey guys, we're about a minute to the fourth quarter and I want to get an answer from really all three of you on this. There's been a few people uh, Corey had had mentioned that um, you know mortgage coach and the total cost analysis is a super powerful um, value prop she's using with realtor. So did Brad. I don't know if you saw that. Um, she said mortgage coach itself is a value prop. I met with a big realtor this morning and they were so impressed with the TCA. I showed him an example. Um, Brad said something you know very similar. Um, so Dan, let's have you go first because you're a mortgage coach and you're coached by Coach Cooley. And then Cody, I'd love to hear how you integrate mortgage coach with realtors. And then I'd love, you know, Coach Cooley, I'd love to hear, you know, how you're, um, you know, giving leadership around that. But Dan, how how are you as a mortgage coach kind of taking this and using mortgage coach to have not only a, you know, a winning value prop to earn a new relationship, but a winning value prop to keep the business coming? Yeah. So that first meeting with the realtor <clears throat> is my opportunity to make a massive first impression. So I always lead with the all about you form. I have them fill that out or I bring one with me. So I send it to them with the calendar invite. That all, all about you form is in the file section. I think in both the mortgage coach community and my rise MLO. Yeah, it is. Keller community. Yeah. So you'll understand what that is. That's a connection piece. Okay. From there, I ask them a couple simple questions. We've done this before in the interviews, but I always weave in, do you have any business right now? And I kind of make it sound like it's a struggle that I've had that we all have right now. Um, boy, are you seeing this right now in the marketplace where you just have so much misinformation or people that are confused whether or not they should sell or whether or not they should buy? Okay, I like asking questions where I can guarantee the response. They're gonna say yes every single time. OK, that's when I bring in mortgage coach and I tell them, if you have any buyers, I have a presentation that is 100 percent bulletproof. It's how to give yourself a fifty thousand dollar year raise by buying your first house. And I share with them. It's how I use the rent versus zone, but basically down at the bottom or and it doesn't have to be for a first time home buyer. But down at the bottom, I changed a couple of things within mortgage coach. You and I did a call on this, Dave, with Michael Mayer. Right. And. 
I do the total net worth in five years. So by buying a home with a moderate appreciation, five to 6%, which is kind of where we've been last year and where we're, we're proposed to be, by buying a seven or $800,000 home up here, if it appreciates at 5% a year, you're earning approximately about forty dollars to $50,000 a year in appreciation. And so I always ask the realtor, I said, what if you went to one of your clients? You said, hey, whenever they object, you say, hey, let me ask you a question. If you went to your boss today and you asked for a $50,000 a year raise, what do you think they'd say? And the realtor is like, oh my God, that's good. So I lead with that. I have the technology and I have the sales ability to sit down with your clients and have this make financial sense to them, whether it's I'm not going to sell right now, whether I should wait for the market and then sell, whether I should wait for the market and then buy. Like you said, Dave, we are mortgage professionals. I know the data. I listen to Dan Rawich. I listen to some of the top economists and they're talking about the National Association of Realtors, every 1% drop in interest rate, uh, millions Two to five million home buyers are going to come into the marketplace. Okay, cool. Would you rather ride that wave of appreciation or have to try to catch it? Let's get you into the market before the rates drop, before the Fed has been very transparent when they're going to drop rates, which mortgage rates will follow. And so having these one to three minute conversations with real estate agents, when you sit down, not only do they leave with, wow, all about you form wow, this guy has the unique ability to generate business and to help me generate more business. Wow, he's a professional. And mortgage coach, mortgage, mortgage coach is that cherry on top of the Sunday. Love that. And uh, Cody, how, how do you as a mortgage coach integrate that into this process? And then we'll get your thoughts on it, Chad. Yeah. Yeah. So I, <clears throat> for anybody like wondering about these calls, I've always heard you never sell on the phone and, and we're really just trying to get in front of them and get that meeting. And once you are sitting there in front of the agent, that's when you get, you know, you bring out all of your tools and you show them what you can do for them after discovery of what they're lacking. That's pretty much the what's going on there. And if you guys are subscribers to the Mortgage Coach channel, just in the last two weeks, you could probably come up with five to 10 ways to help them generate more buyers or more listings just by using some of the tips from the top guys that come up on here, top girls that come up on here. Um, but as far as integrating like mortgage coach, Dave, uh, when I sit down with an agent, I, I literally do that. Like I looked at what Sean Herrero said about going to the brand new listings. If he were to change marketplaces and integrating that presentation on here's the right way to look at price. I've sat down and I've done that with agents since that. I think that interview came out last week, maybe or two weeks ago. I think I've probably done 15 to 20 total cost analysis just on that. So for me, I almost, I don't want to say blindly trust because you get these top producers are having so much success. Like why would I recreate the wheel? You know, whatever they're doing and it's working, I'm just going to go ahead and, and do the same thing in my marketplace. Uh, so that's really what I do. I look at the strategies that you guys are putting out using TCAs and I'm just rolling that out and I'm going with it as if I've been doing it for years and it, it works out. You know, you, you have that confidence. Like you mentioned, if you do use these TCAs, the realtors can see the difference in uh, you know, a, a fee worksheet loan officer or a total cost analysis mortgage advisor. So thank you. That was awesome, both of you guys. And and Chad, you know, you're you're new to this community. Obviously, you're not new to coaching realtors and, and you're not new anymore in terms of uh conditioning coaching for mortgage professionals. But what are what are your thoughts on how a mortgage coach can, you know, bring unique value? Um, into the conversation and into the overall experience with the agent. What are your thoughts? Um, I would just, I would say that there is such a huge need out there for real estate agents, for any type of system training, any type of support that you can provide. Um, as somebody who talks with real estate agents every day, they, they really struggle with all facets of their business. So any type of organization that you can bring to their business, any type of systems that you can bring to their business, will be like an undeniable benefit, especially if you learn how to like, how to, and I know that a lot of people don't like this word, but actually how to sell it, you know what I mean? And, and how to sell the need. So, um, you know, there, there, there are some loan officers who just, you know, want to receive business from them. And there are other loan officers who use techniques like mortgage coach or like Dan Keller's six by 12 program to really have an impact on their actual business that, that creates the business that comes to them rather than just relying on somebody to send it to them. 
So um, again, like being able to package that into a phone call and deliver that is, is really huge because most people have their, their ears shut um, to whatever kind of value that you've got. Um, and they're not, they're not hearing it. They're not listening to it. And so if you can make it easier on yourself by taking that mortgage coach value or Dan six by 12 value or whatever value you've got internally and learn to restructure how you present it to people to get them to actually ask you about it or what is that? Or if your value proposition is so good where it's like, what's the catch, man, you're in such a good position um, to share that product with as many people as possible. And that's, I think, the love, goal, right? Love, love that. And I, I want to say something for anybody that, oh, it sounds salesy. I mean, guys, selling is really simple. It's a it's a transaction where goods or services are being exchanged for money. And selling is what makes America work. You know, that like selling is a very honorable business to be in. You you are helping people. Um, the difference is, are you, are you just manipulating people or are you really giving value? And I've spent my entire life, you know, really, how can you turn technology into a service that creates more value for a buyer? Uh, and when you, when you use tech, you know, like mortgage coach, you know, everything I've ever been involved in as an entrepreneur to create more value for consumers. And again, it has to be true value for consumers. It's an honorable thing. It's an innovative thing. It's not a bad thing. Um, but what you find is that the people like Dan Keller, like Jeremy Forcier, like, you know, and I, it, the list goes on of the biggest and most badass people I've ever interviewed. They, they're all obsessed with impact. They're all obsessed with helping people um, create wealth with real estate and create financial real create financial freedom with real estate and by making great decisions. So be proud of being in sales. It's not a bad word. Um, so guys, we've got a few minutes left. Um, I want to make sure that anyone that wants to get in the, your program, Dan, wants to learn more about Coach Cooley. You know, I want to see more Cody's out there. Uh, Cody, congrats on your success. I mean, to have already hit, what, what did you say the number was? You, you've already hit what percentage of your previous year's um, volume? Yeah, so at the end of April, I'll be I'm projected to be funded at forty seven percent of what I funded last year. So <laughs> in the first three months, and by the way, guys, the market's not up fifty percent. The market's not up a hundred percent. Cody is beating the market. Cody is gaining market share. So I want to see more stories like that. Uh, I don't know either Dan or Coach Cooley. Tell us how we can learn more about your program and people can get involved in it. Yeah. Yeah. So I would just go to the rise, our rise MLO uh, sales training with Dan Keller. If you go to Facebook, it's a private group. Um, go there, ask to join there. Um, once a month, I do uh, just a, an open forum, open Q and A. And then um, we'll be, we'll be posting some stuff over there on how to get into round two with Cooley and Keller. Um, really what it is, you guys, it's, it's, it's role play. It's something that um, I haven't really seen a whole lot of it in the mortgage industry, but it's it's once a week. It's a 30 minute call. You jump on and you I, I'll, I'll share this because it's personal. My wife and I, we have kids. Um, we want to be really great parents. So we joined this parenting. We went out and hired this this parenting coach. Phenomenal, very expensive, but a phenomenal coach. One of the things I learned right away from him is how he set up his format and he coaches, he does a little bit of, of, of group coaching, but he does this open forum once a month where the, the parents can come in and they can ask questions and you get to listen to the coach kind of address some of the issues they're having. Jenny and I have learned more off of the group Q&A coaching than the private group coaching below because you're, at, you're seeing parents being vulnerable with certain situations they're dealing with with their kids and then you're getting the coach coaching them through role playing, how to sit down with your youngster and walk through and talk through. And that's what you get. I share this example with you because that's the value that you get with the role play call. So we do a 30 minute role play Fridays at 10 a.m. And then if you want the next level coaching um, and training where how to master the first meeting, um, what how to generate those listings and those buyers, um, there's a there's a level two. So you can head over to Rise to find out more about that. Um, and, and, and there's a ton of free information over there too. And then we bring in Cooley every once in a while. Um, like I said, like once a month to add some value there. All right, guys. So here's the deal. Go, go get in this group. Uh, it looks like you've got 2,200 members and growing great job, Dan, 
check it out. I love I love what you said. Uh, role playing with Cooley and Keller. That's that's a cool name all itself. Uh, we want to see as many people in this modern mortgage summit as possible. So, you know, get signed up. Someone asked for a discount code. There's no discount codes. You know, this is put on by Win by Noon. The the title sponsor is First Home IQ. So, you know, most of the proceeds are going to a nonprofit. Uh, get get signed up. I I'm working harder than ever to do training and coaching for producing branch managers. I feel like the producing branch manager is the hardest job in this business, and it's the most important job because not only are you out there producing, selling with pride. Um, and kicking ass and taking names, but you're responsible for the success of everyone else in your branch. So I created this webpage, trustengine.com. I talk about it all the time. Go check it out. Also, I want to make sure this um, this Obsessed with Impact Mobile Club, uh, this is where I am texting the most valuable content. And this will definitely be sent out later today as this hits. I try not to do more than three texts a week because while I'm interviewing loan officers all the time, you know, two to three times a week, like this is the signal. This is the most valuable thing. If you want to get that, 949-799-0837, get signed up. Coach Cooley, we got two minutes left. So we're in the last two minutes of the game. Uh, the games are won and lost in the last two minutes. Put your camera on and give us a closing thought, bro. Yeah, I'm trying to put my camera on. I really apologize for being cameraless today. For some reason, the technology of messenger and zoom are not working together and my That's messenger okay, is going Just... off and it freezes so um two minutes what do we got close it out bro you got one all minute. right i i i so i i guess the, the way that i would close this call out is there's there is a way that if you guys want to take control of your business right the control of your business comes from a skill set Okay. Um, and I think that's what stresses everybody out. It certainly stressed everybody out in 2023. Like if I had the ability to create business when I want to create business, how better off would my life be? How better off would, how, how, how easier would it be for me to keep on track to my goals and provide the things I want for myself, my family and the people around me, right? The, the whole concept behind what Dan and I are doing and what I do with my real estate agents every day is to give them that ability, but that takes work. It takes, it takes effort. Right. And, it, and, and so it's, it's an investment that you have to make on your skill set that will pay off for the rest of your life. And it's uncomfortable and it's not easy, but there's a reason why some people in your industry are skilled and why some people in your industry are constantly being sold stuff that doesn't work. Right. It's because you're always looking for an out when the answer is within you. It's like, you've got to invest in that skill set. You've got to learn the art of communication, whether that be with your borrowers, with real estate agents, with people around you, you've got to invest daily into that skill so that you can take all the stress out of our industry and always be in control of your business, regardless of where the market bends. And that's how you know you've made it. If you can withstand any pushback in the market, any fluctuation of the market and still be good. Doesn't mean it doesn't make a dent, but you're still cruising along on pace to your goals, regardless of the shifts of the marketplace. So that's what I got for you today, Dave Savage. All right, man. Well, I'm looking forward to our one-on-one -on -one interview. Uh, please give a reaction. What did you think of today's call? Whatever, whatever emoji comes to mind, let's close it out. Uh, and again, the way you say thank you to these guys, you know, follow them on social media, uh, engage in their communities. I'm looking forward to keeping this going. You know, Dan Keller, you killed it, brother. Appreciate you. Yep. Hey guys, and go, go follow Cooley on Instagram. Guy fires me up every morning. He, the guy's just next level. Check him out. And then guys, let's give a big hand for Cody. How inspired are we by this? Such by a this gangster. Next gen badass new mortgage yep. originator. Uh he's crushing the market, you know, 50%. And you know, what what is that? Almost no, that's like a hundred percent increase in production. <laughs> I can't wait to see you how you're gonna close out the year, brother. And uh I'm definitely gonna put you on the list to do an interview, man. So great job. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. This is a wrap, everyone. Take it easy.